Today, we're going to check out the construction of the anti-roll bar system for the Nova project. Welcome to the Kiefer's Hot Rod Shop YouTube channel. I'm Nick Kiefer. Before I show y'all how I put this anti-roll bar in the Nova, I'd like to thank y'all again for watching these videos and liking and subscribing. I'm uh, really stoked to be getting up close to 500 subscribers, and um, I hope we get there soon and just uh, keep going from there. Thanks again, um, and if you haven't liked and subscribed, I would be honored. But uh, let's go ahead and get on into this and uh, check out the process. We're in the uh, rear wheel tub area here, looking at the uh, chassis. So this is the uh, main frame rail. This is the upright going to this kind of rear hoop I have. And then these are the triangulators that uh, keep the back half from flopping around. And um, what I need to add to the chassis at this point is um, all the infrastructure for the anti-roll bar. Uh, which is going to keep the car from leaning in operation, uh, especially when there's uh, tons of torque applied to that rear end. So here's the uh, bearing and the uh, bearing shell, um, housing receiver, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I need to mount this um, in this area. So... Um, depending on kind of the construction of the chassis, sometimes this can go in this area or under the frame rail or back in here. Um, you know, it, it just depends on how you want your linkage to go and everything. But what I'm wanting to do is um, I want it here. The center line of the axle actually shares the center line with this upright here. So... Um, I want my arms, which are six inch center to center, to actually point backwards so that when they travel in an arc, they actually mimic the four link suspension, um, which is pivoting from the brackets, which are right there. I'll actually kind of show you all just in case you're not sure exactly where we are in the car. So... Um, what I'm going to do um, is I want to make this removable. Um, some folks uh, go ahead and weld these shells into the car, uh, which is cool. Um, obviously, that holds it really securely. Or you can even weld them in kind of a spot like this. Um, and, and that's a strong way to do it. And it still makes it where it's serviceable. So you can still slide these bearings out, even if this is welded in the car. Um, slide them out and remove the torsion bar which goes inside of the bearing um, and that works well but I want to be able to fully remove everything just in case something wears out or breaks um, and so they send four pairs of these brackets um, which um, one side's radius to uh, attach to that bearing shell um, and it's a really nice fit from uh, quarter max, um, really nice matched radius there. Um, and then the other is designed to attach to the tubing um, or some factory frame rail or rectangle tubing or round tubing, what have you. Um, and then they, they bolt together with a pair of bolts to, uh, to support that bearing shell. And so the way that they supply everything, they actually have a set of spacers, which um, goes between kind of two pairs of these brackets and cradles either edge of this bearing shell. So kind of imagine if it's doing like that and that, and then it can sit down on a tube. And that's a very nice design, however, um, 
for the suspension travel in this car, which will be eight inches, um, considering that it's a six inch arm, it's going to have to swing past tubing. Maybe not this tube, but definitely this tube. And if I set it up in the manner in which they intend with those brackets, um, the hardware on the end of that um, arm, which I'll I'll show you in a second, would would actually run into the tubing of the chassis. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to weld both of these shells to a tube that's going to travel transversely across the car in this area. And then on either end, I'm going to uh, support that assembly with brackets both going in this area and in this area so that it's supported in a couple different directions and then the actual tilt of the bearing is supported by that tube. Um, it's three inch uh, 83 thousandths wall uh, tubing that I'll be welding to the back side of either of these so these kind of have a a lip at the back. Um, it's a really nice piece, um, but you can kind of see how that works. And um, I've actually, so I got the idea from Larry Jeffers. Um, in his chassis, he actually incorporates these bearing shells into a tube, which travels transversely across the chassis. Um, he actually builds his into the chassis uh, at the point where the rear frame rails and triangulator gussets and everything meet, he makes it into like a large cross member that's about three inches in diameter. I, once again, will not be permanently attaching the anti-roll bar mounting hardware to the car. Um, just, you know, if down the road we decide uh, maybe to use a different system or uh, if something does mess up and, and break and it just needs to be fixed or changed in any way it just allows for options um, so uh, I'm gonna kind of show you all the setup over on the bench of how I'm gonna mount everything and kind of the uh, the hardware and the parts that that come with the kit that I'll be using uh, to mount all of it in the car. So we'll check that out and then um, we'll start building and mounting the system. Alright, so here's a setup of uh, the uh, Quarter Max kit kind of as it comes um, from them. Uh, they include these spacers. Um, these are just uh, some setup hardware of mine. They actually include some uh, really nice hardware, uh, nylock nuts and these nice grade 8 bolts with their kit and gold dichromate finish um, really nice stuff um, but as you can see this is kind of how it attaches to the tubing and um, to the bearing shell and it's clever to have it where it welds on the very edge um, of the bearing shell uh, so it doesn't distort the uh, main main part there where um, you know the the bearing actually slides in um, I really like this setup but if you look kind of down the tube here and down the arm there's no room for this to swing past the tubing and in most uh, designs chassis designs and in most instances that's just not really a big issue you just put this under the under the uh, frame rail and just have it where it never swings that much but since this is you know a small tire car it's going to have a lot of separation uh, in the chassis so I need that travel. What I'm going to show you now is here's the uh, setup that I'm, I'm wanting to uh, go with in the car. So this protractor is set up to the angle that that main frame rail and that upright this thing is going to kind of be situated near um, our at. And these are those brackets that fit onto the bearing shell. Um, you can kind of see them assembled here. And what I'm going to do is 
make them into one bracket, so I've already drawn a line here where I'm going to cut both of them and weld them together. And then they're going to mount to these tabs, which will be welded to the upright and that main frame rail. And then once again, the actual kind of tilt of this bearing will be supported by the three inch tube I mentioned that I've ordered from Stock Car Steel uh, out of North Carolina. Um, and that's gonna travel transversely across the chassis and help support those bearing shells. So I've trimmed a uh, pair of these little brackets here to fit together. Um, once again, I've got this uh, protractor in the angle um, that matches the main frame rail on that upright that this thing's going to kind of be situated against. And um, I've just trimmed the brackets uh, to uh, meet together at that angle um, once again so that I can fasten these uh, to them or to it. So uh, next step I'm going to take is um, actually welding these together and um, then I'll secure them to the uh, bearing shell there. Here's my welding setup for uh, putting the uh, bracket pieces together uh, to support this uh, bearing shell. Um, and what I've done um, is I've beveled these for weld penetration and I've got them set up just right um, with this uh, inside of the radius and I've set it up to the angle it needs to be at and um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some tacks on this um, and then probably pull this out just so it doesn't get any uh, heat into it that's unnecessary. And then go ahead and uh, weld these up. Um, after that, I'm going to go ahead and grind everything flat and uh, sand it just so that there's nothing interrupting, you know, these tabs when they bolt on. So that's pretty pretty tight in there. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just weld in this direction so that it doesn't pinch that uh, shut anymore. This guy fits in there nicely, and um, I'm just letting it cool down right now before I pull it out of these clamps and grind everything off. Um, but I definitely, I wasn't shy with the amount of pedal and amperage that I gave this thing. Um, I wanted to penetrate really nicely just so it doesn't crack or anything down the road. Um, as much as I didn't want to warp it, it was really important to give this thing a nice solid weld. Um, I'm just going to let this cool off, uh, grind it down, and I've got the uh, the other pair ready, ready to go right there. I actually just need to kind of bevel those edges so I get that nice penetration. Um, but it's looking good. And I, uh, I did go ahead and just weld the back just to make sure uh, everything's filled in and uh, ready to, uh, to grind down and, and uh, polish out. All right, cool. Let's check out the other pair here. I'm all fitted up with the bearing shell here. Everything's beveled and uh, cleaned up. Let's put some tacks on it. Got the 
attack zone. Let's go ahead and weld her up. Actually, I'm going to fill that in just a little more. So there's not that little gap there. All right, cool. Got these all welded up, and I uh, ground down and polished the uh, welds on uh, both sides. And then I uh, just finished it off with uh, some 180 on the locked out DA. Um, they're looking pretty good. Um, fit the uh, bearing shell pretty well. And um, I'm pretty sure these uh, brackets are going to fit just right. Yep. Looking good. And um, now it's just time to uh, secure them to the bearing shells and then secure those to that. Um, that three inch tube that I have to go um, across the car. To show you real quick, here they are just situated against these tubes and you can see how they match that angle. So when those little mounting tabs uh, bolt up to, to these, they'll uh, hold this off and then the uh, flat edges that weld onto these tubes will, will meet nice and uh, straight. All right. Um, so I'm just kind of making some final measurements, um, figuring out exactly how much I want to clear the uh, frame tube by here. And I'm starting to clean up this uh, three inch diameter tube uh, in preparation to um, weld these bearing shells on. So I'm just trying to make a final decision on um, the width of everything. Um, and I've set this carpenter square up uh, measured the distance to the inside of this which will be the outside of the tube and I'm just making sure I'm gonna have adequate clearance for the bolt and all that I came up with this dimension and I think I want just a little more room just for messing with this hardware um, to install it in the car I'm probably gonna have to put the bolt in this way with the nut over here because the wheel tub will be kind of situated here. This will poke through the wheel tub. But um, once I come to a final length, um, get the clearance I want and everything, I'm going to go ahead and cut this, um, straighten it out on the belt sander and, and polish it up. I've got the uh, three inch tube marked and uh, ready to cut on the cold saw here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that and then uh, straighten it out, clean it up, and uh, bevel the end, get it ready to weld with the uh, belt sander there. So we'll check that out next. I've got one of the bearing shells set up with one of the uh, brackets here um, or tabs to mount it and I'm just gonna uh, get started uh, I'm gonna tack this thing on and check everything out and run some beads next Cool, so I've got this one tacked up and um, just kind of looking at it. And um, so this is how half of it will be set up. And then obviously other end will just kind of be the same, but mirror. Um, but it's looking pretty good. I definitely wanted to weld these onto those first just to keep them straight. 
Um, you can see I have them set up against these aluminum flat pieces. Um, and so I wanted to go ahead, uh, get that all welded up, and then, uh, then I can weld that together. It's got a nice little step in it, which will, uh, you know, help uh, join both together uh, with a weld. It gives a nice little place for um, a fillet to exist, giving a little strength. And then I've got it kind of grooved out for for some penetration. Um, I definitely, you know, want to avoid getting this too hot. Uh, you can see, you know, a little discoloration there, but the uh, the bearing has to slide in there. So I want to keep it all nice and true, but. You know, get this one all ready to go and um, tack it just the same as the other. Cool, so I'll just tack this one up and I'm uh, letting it cool in place for a sec. And um, then I'm going to uh, get these ready to uh, uh, completely weld that around the tab to the uh, bearing shell there um, to get ready to make this whole assembly. So we'll. Uh, check that out next super cool so I've got this thing bolted together and everything lined up really nicely um, so that's that's a good sign that it's symmetrical and um, now I'm just uh, getting ready I'm gonna clamp it down to make sure that it doesn't spread apart on this side um, as I'm welding it and uh, I think what I'm gonna want to do is just go at one side then go at the opposite and uh, just kind of bring it around in stages to avoid overheating anything and uh, just make sure I get a nice uh, consistent good weld on there. All right let's check out how this first stage goes. I'm gonna um, weld this uh, just about an inch or so and then uh, flip it over and counter it the same. Um, I think I'm going to have to come back and dress the uh, very uh, extreme corners later um, just because I don't want to weld these things together. So um, I'm just going to start right on top of that corner and start working around. see how this is going um, I might be able to step the amperage up just a little bit um, definitely don't want to put too much heat into the end there but it's looking pretty good um, but I might just put I, I might just crank it up a little and then um, just make sure everything's nicely cleaned up. Um, I've got, as I showed before, a little bit of bevel in here just to help with uh, penetration. And um, I think for now I'm going to flip this over, weld the uh, opposite piece, and then um, maybe through the middle here I'll, I'll crank it up and amps a little bit. So, weld this other side. I gave it a half dozen pulses just like the other side. Um, I like how the weld's laying in there. Um, 
but I think once again I can give it a little bit more amperage. All right, turn the amperage up a little bit, and I'm going to uh, go ahead and run this well. that I'm um, I'm not having to uh, bury the pedal all the way and it's wetting out um, I'm running along pretty nicely just gonna keep on going through this thing and letting it cool every once in a while and check it out Been welding around this thing and it's starting to get pretty hot so um, I want to go ahead and let it cool down before things start to distort um, but I didn't I didn't mind too much a uh, real hot weld in through the center there um, just because I want it to be tied in nicely but uh, just to avoid warpage I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of give it a uh, give it a little break here and then uh, continue it continue on where I kind of left off on the other side I'll flip it and um, bring the welds around but I want to keep it all clamped down tight uh, while it cools just to uh, avoid any uh, warpage should be good and we'll, uh, we'll check it out after it cools and I do some more welding welded this up and I'm leaving it clamped just so that it doesn't uh, kind of warp apart there. Um, welds tend to want to pull into themselves so um, keeping everything clamped down and nice and straight. Um, I was able to kind of finish that weld a little bit. I'll probably touch it up a little uh, just get it nice and wet it out and then these I uh, welded over the uh, edges but I don't want to go all the way around just because I don't want to stick these things together so still gonna mess with that but I also made sure to kind of take my time uh, between repositioning and unclamping and reclamping just to uh, avoid any kind of warpage that might happen at that time so just especially those last few uh, wells I just didn't want it to mess up so it's cooling down um, and the uh, next step is going to be to uh, start welding these to the uh, three inch piece of tubing here so we'll uh, we'll check that out in a bit all right I've got these unbolted and um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, kind of clean up the uh, the little corner ends and make sure the welds nice and uh, smooth around the corner on them Cool, so um, I've got the uh, edges just kind of um, welded over. Um, just try to keep them smooth and keep stress concentrations out of them um, as much as I could. Um, once they cool down for a sec, uh, I'll be able to start positioning them onto the uh, cross tube here. I think what I'll do is I'll just kind of start by centering one up on one end, get it kind of tacked on there and then um, I'll uh, position the next one 
just going flat to flat so that they're timed the same um, and uh, and they'll fit in the car correctly. All right, so I've got the bearing shell uh, and mounting tab assembly uh, set up with the three inch tube here. And what I've done is I've clamped it together using this uh, large wood clamp um, to keep this from tilting when I make my first tack weld. It's got some weight to it and um, it might not be a problem just to kind of tack it uh, in a pattern, but just to ensure that it doesn't lift a little bit and uh, kind of angle off, uh, I just wanted to go ahead and clamp it. So I'm gonna tack one side on flip it and then kind of do the do the same with the other um, but it, I'm gonna have to line it up so that they're situated exactly kind of in parallel uh, or mirror image if you will so you know put some tacks on this you got everything all cleaned up and wiped down uh, with acetone and um, then we'll set up for the uh, second end to be welded on All right, I want to take this chance just to make sure everything's nicely centered up. Cool. Uh, now I just need to reposition it. Uh, tack the other side. All right, cool. Got four tacks on there. I um, think I'm going to go ahead and um, <clears throat> stick a couple more on and uh, then just to ensure everything's stable. And then I'll, I'll flip it over and set up this other side here. Cool. Reposition it and uh, tack the last uh, octant and uh, we'll set the other side. Eight, uh, eight tacks with filler rod should be good enough to keep this stable um, as I weld it um, around. So that's, this side should be good for right now. I'll line the other side up, tack it on, and then I'll work on uh, welding welding the ends completely around. All right, cool. So I've got the anti-roll bar housing all set up here. And um, this is the end I already tacked, and this is the end that I'm just about to tack together. And um, as you can see, I've got everything set up nice and parallel. So that's sitting right on the center of that tab. And this one is sitting flat on the uh, piece of square stock I've got right here. So everything's nice and parallel. And I've set it up uh, centered, um, you know, the tube and the bearing uh, shell holder. And so now what I'm about to do is go ahead and, and tack that end on. I've got the clamp nice and tight to hold everything true. And um, I'm going give it, to give it a few tacks here, and then um, I'll probably go ahead and set it up vertically, like how I tack this one, just to uh, do the uh, eight tacks or so around and to weld everything up. So it's looking good, and uh, just about to make it all one piece.
All right, great. So I've got this first tack on here. Um, and at this point, I want to make sure that the uh, parts didn't move around. And I want to go ahead and um, after I check that, I'm going to put a tack on the opposite end here. Yeah, no, it's all still parallel. Looks great. So, let's give it another tack and um, go ahead and uh, check it again, and I'll continue on. going to be perfect. Get a couple more tacks on here and then I'll put it vertical and uh, do some more. <clears throat> All right, cool. So I've got this thing set up um, like it was when I did the other end and um, now I'm going to go ahead, stick some tacks on it, and get ready to uh, completely weld everything. cool this things all tacked up <clears throat> um, what I might do next actually is go ahead and just mock it up with those uh, tabs and uh, take it over there and and um, mock it up in the car uh, before I totally weld it and just uh, make sure everything's uh, fitting just right all right cool I've got the housing and tabs mocked up in the car and everything fits in really nicely um, you can see kind of how the ends of the, uh, bearing holder cups there protrude past the tubing a bit to provide that clearance area, uh, for the, for the arms that'll be, actually they go back for the arms that'll be in this area here. This thing's looking good and, um, also importantly, it's uh, sitting nicely on both sides. Here, tape slipped a little bit, but you can see um, it's settled in there really nicely. And things should do the job. Um, it's uh, pretty much the only place I could put it that made sense, um, just allowing travel of the suspension and, and uh, having it do what it needs to do. But it's uh, it's time to weld it up, so I'm going to take it over to the bench and uh, make sure it's all tied together. So after that last heat, I uh, let it cool down a little bit, and now I'm going to set it up again and carry on with the welds. Just want to be careful on this, um, not to overheat it, just so these tabs don't warp, and also want to uh, weld the um, those bearing cups on nice and evenly. Start bringing it around here.
I've heard uh, a few pinging sounds uh, as I've welded this, and a lot of times that'll indicate that um, tack welds or welds or anything um, are cracking, but um, I'm thinking on this, it, it's just metal moving around, uh, maybe like the inside of the tube against the uh, bearing cup there. Um, I keep looking over it for cracks, and I haven't spotted any yet, but it's definitely something to look out for. As a side note, I'm 99.5% sure that little tinging sound um, that you could hear during the welding was just the inside layer of metal flaking off inside of this tube. Um, so this that joint there's the the inside of this joint where the bearing cup and the transverse three inch tube meet and um, That's just kind of part of what happens on the back of a weld sometimes as far as I know That's pretty typical for something like that and uh, it's just the heat from that weld coming through kind of changing the metal kind of flaking that outer layer off um, inside of the weld there. So at least you can see that the uh, heat got into it pretty nicely. And everything's super clean. I, I clean everything inside now when I weld it. So I think it's just that. Capturing all three pieces um, as I weld is proving to be a little bit challenging. Um, I'm kind of having to move the uh, arc around just a little bit, but it's not it's not too far out of range. Um, I'd say if I wasn't trying to also weld onto the tab, it would be extremely close to it, if not slightly overlapping um, otherwise. I don't typically weld three things together at the same time, but adding, adding a bead in this area and then welding to that would require grinding probably to prepare the surface for the tube weldment. So overall, I think it's just better uh, to do it this way, and, it, and it's working out pretty well. Getting a little bit out of position with some of these. Um, really want to maintain that uh, tungsten electrode pointing pretty close to into the what you're welding. Um, you know, with your 90 degree angle between the filler metal and the electrode, ideally, um, it's pretty easy to get out of out of line when welding something round like this. Um, I've, uh, I've completed another heat here and I'm actually going to let this cool and come back and I think I'll be able to seal it up uh, with a third. So we'll uh, give this a little bit of time. I'll put it on that piece of tubing there for it to relax and uh, we'll come back and do some more in a few minutes. 
Also, check out the uh, arc voltage and amperage as I weld. Uh, kind of interesting to look at. Um, and it should be in your view. I just moved that glove off of it so you can see it better. I'm going to take a second here and actually sharpen this tungsten some up. It's starting to just barely get kind of a um, little almost ball at the end. I've noticed welding high amperage stuff um, it just gets kind of a little deformed at the tip so that's why we have this awesome tool here. Things the best. Cool. Nice sharp tip. All right, I repositioned y'all so you can check check out uh, the completion of this other side here. bit just gonna bring that around and this is actually how I ended up doing the other side also um, just that last little bit on the tab side just kind of worked out like that and I got to put a nice little weld at the very end of the tab and round it over camera ran out of memory at the end of this last weld here but I've uh, welded both ends up and um, just gonna let it cool down now. so when I uh, welded the tabs on um, along with the bearing cups and the center tube it actually uh, pulled the the tabs this way kind of in uh, just a little bit which is fine because I haven't installed these on the car yet, um, which they will bolt to and which will weld to the car. Um, but I'm just gonna try to straighten them out a little bit and um, just go over this one more time. That's what I'm, I'm gonna do to just try to kind of straighten these things out. And it should pull it pretty, pretty close to straight, but if not, it's, it's fine. Um, the best way to do this would be to have a jig that holds everything in place while it's welded and while it cools and everything. Um, 
but that's a little bit of an investment and I don't really plan on making a number of these so it's kind of a one-off thing but I'm gonna set up for that weld and we'll uh, we'll check that out all right cool um, so I've set this thing up on its side um, I've got the ground set up kind of through this aluminum bar here and um, I've actually got this clamped in place um, just because it's kind of too awkward to roll and fill uh, just with my two hands here. Um, so um, I've got this all set up like this, and I'm just going to do a little piece at a time. Uh, I wanted to do it in three or four heats anyway, so this should work out pretty well. But let's check this out. Hopefully get this thing nice and straightened up. Alright, great. So that's working pretty well. Um, got a little out of angle at the end there, but I'll kind of go back over that anyway. Um, but this is nice. This is adding a nice uh, fillet. It's just going to be stronger, and um, this should, uh, it's, uh, it's pulling that thing straight. I, I think I can visually tell at this point. So seems like it's working out really well and all for the better. So. I'm going to kind of switch back and forth and do opposite sides here while the other cools um, and we'll uh, just kind of check that out as I go. this post flow and then um, while it's cooling I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to this side here so I'm doing about 15 pulses per heat um, you know in three fives or that last one was ten and five but um, I think that's gonna get me around this uh, weld in three or pretty close to it so that's just kind of the reasoning behind that Yeah, cool, that's looking good. And it, I think it's pulling those tabs almost back straight, so that's great. Once again, uh, not the most important thing here, but it is one of the goals with this as well as to increase that weld fillet and add a little strength to this. When this car's working, it's gonna be pulling on these tabs pretty hard, so they need to be on there really well. couple of those I was just going over previous wells. I'm actually going to add about five more here. And 
and I, I can actually feel this thing's getting pretty considerably hot. So um, at this point, I'm just going to let everything cool down and then come back for this final heat. But it's looking good. All right, cool. <clears throat> um, this thing's had a nice chance to cool down here, and I'm um, going to go ahead and reposition it and get it ready for this uh, last heat here. I gave it a little cool down time between those last few beads, um, mainly just so I don't super concentrate heat in that area. Uh, when you get to the end of something, the heat doesn't really have anywhere to travel except back into the piece, so um, that's why I just kind of went slow on that. And I might even go back and kind of dress them up a little bit, but um, looks pretty good. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, switch to the other side. Um, actually, I will go ahead and just touch these two last beads up. Cool. Just don't want to stress concentration there. want it smooth as can be. Alright, and I'll actually add just a little bit of filler. Just run this and uh, there. One more I want to put down at the end of the filler just to make sure it's all nice and smooth and tied in. It's looking pretty straight. Um, it might still be leaned in a little bit, which is which will be fine. Uh, Didn't hear any cracking and pinging, so that's really sweet. Um, everything seems good to go. Definitely gonna let it cool, and uh, pretty soon it's gonna be time to make the actual torsion bar. So now it's time to go ahead and cut this two inch, 250 wall chromoly tube uh, to length. I've got it marked, and then I'll be preparing it to uh, weld these splined ends on. Everything's really hefty, and these are uh, all the components of the actual torsion bar uh, part of the anti-roll bar system. Uh, these arms mount onto the splined uh, ends here, and I'll also be timing them uh, exactly parallel when I set everything up. But first, just need to uh, make this cut in the cold saw, and then I'll dress it on the uh, uh, belt sander and make it like this end um, 
with the uh, with this surface flat that butts up against you know that surface on the um, splined in there and I'll also be beveling it to create a v-notch uh, for welding these together so I get really good penetration it's got to be a really strong weld this is a real high stress part of the uh, anti roll bar system so we'll check that out and um, we'll see you over there at the cold saw So I've been working on cleaning this up, uh, kind of polishing the, uh, the ends of this inside and out and smoothing that bevel I put in with the uh, belt sander a little bit. Um, and next I'm going to work on fitting these um, splined ends uh, in here. They, uh, they're made with about a 2000s clearance. Um, for a inch and a half ID tube, but these are actually a little over thick on the wall. The ID of them is about like 1.492 or 4, if I remember correctly. I measured them earlier. And then this is a uh, 1.498. So um, I'm going to have to uh, um, kind of clean these out I think I might actually just resort to using um, like a, a barrel sander and just go at it really subtly and um, smoothly as I can I don't want to get in there and, and make a mess um, I want to keep everything nice and uh, and round and um, fit you know fitting nicely together um, but that's that's what I'm gonna work on next starting to really fit in there. This is 80 grit. It's uh, one of the finest ones I have. I didn't want to move too much material and I wanted a nice finish. Uh, a, little, yeah, a little more clean up and I think that's going to work nicely. Keep rotating the tube just in case I have a bias um, to keep everything as even as I possibly can. Well, at the very least, it's super shiny.
got a little bit of texture to it. Yeah, that's starting to fit right in there. Cool. All right. At a certain point, I might break out that um, that caliper piston hone I have and just kind of smooth everything out. Oh yeah, cool. That's right there. So um, that last little bit wants to just press in there. So um, I think that's going to be perfect. Um, once I get everything positioned, that's going to just help hold it all in there. I'll probably polish it up just a little bit more and uh, do the other side just the same. But that's working really well. And it's not wallowed out too bad or anything like that. It's, it's steady. I'm going to have to tap this guy out. It's in there pretty well. Nice. Didn't mess the aluminum up either, so a little bit of cleanup on this and and that, and that should be a really nice fit. And I'll attempt to do the other side just the same way. Cool. All right, so here's the um, uh, brake caliper piston hone. Um, I'm gonna show you all kind of how I use it to uh, smooth this out. Um, cutting and grinding oil just like I drill holes with uh, I use that to lubricate everything and uh, let's put it in there it's kind of tricky um, there we go and just run the thing slow. has the tendency to pop out like that, but it's worth uh, checking fitment at this point because it was really close anyway. Um, so you can see it's kind of got a, a consistent finish to it now. Um, and um, that's pretty, pretty nice. That last little bit's going to need to press in. I might give it a little more clearance just in case it doesn't want to go all the way, but that slides in really true, so I'm going to go ahead and um, get ready to uh, finish this up and do the other side, and um, it should be time for final setup and, uh, and welding. All right, let's check this other side out. All right, let's check out if we're getting close here. Getting close. Not quite there, but close.
going to go ahead and hone it and see, uh, see what we got. right there there it is cool so I think what I'll do is I'll sand it out a little more and we'll be, we'll be there right slides in with just a little bit of wiggling and just gonna get that all smoothed out and there we go all good all right. see how it fits That's perfect. Cool. So we're set on that. Uh, continue cleaning everything up. And then um, set, set this stuff up to uh, go ahead and, and weld. Um, right after I go ahead and poke some rosette weld holes here. I think I'm going to want to catch this thing. This is an inch wide, I believe. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna catch it closer to three quarters of an inch, maybe five eighths, eleven sixteenths away from this edge, um, just to uh, kind of support it with a the maximum amount of leverage without you know melting all this unneededly. Um, well, that's gonna be really nice. And check that out next. I've uh, set up the torsion bar here uh, the tube to make up the torsion bar and the drill press and um, I've got a uh, 5 16 drill bit set up in here just uh, just oiled it as you saw and uh, I'm going to uh, try to poke some holes here three quarters of an inch inboard and um, 90 degrees uh, four of them 90 degrees apart Looks like it's going through nice and straight, and um, I think I'm going to adjust it a tiny little bit. All right, and I'll set up for the other side. Awesome. That brand new bit really does a nice job on this. That's uh, totally awesome. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah, got it right through the mark there. And so, um, set the next one up and poke all these holes.
And instead of setting it up to drill through, I'm just going to set it up to uh, poke right through the other side there. Figure it's about the same amount of uh, work anyway. Seems to be doing really well. Just have to clean these up and deburr them. And uh, I'll do that right after I drill the other side. All right, so. I've been working on setting the two uh, arms of this torsion bar assembly up to be in parallel before I weld the three pieces of the torsion bar together. And I think I've just about got it. Um, I have them sitting on this uh, piece of chromoly here, but um, this table's not perfectly flat so I'm just using the uh, angle finder and uh, visually making looking down this thing to make sure it's uh, nice and parallel so um, I'm also using this clamp to uh, make sure everything's squeezed together and there's no uh, there are no gaps in this area Got everything cleaned up, uh, rosette weld stuff all deburred and cleaned out, and uh, it's just about time to go ahead and and start welding this thing together. I think I'm going to start with tacks and the V trenches just to index everything, um, and then um, then go on to the uh, these big rosette welds. We pulled it apart and made sure these holes were really clean. Um, gave everything another once over and uh, I think I've got it perfectly uh, parallel uh, regarding the two arms. So it's looking good and I'm going to go ahead and tack one side and um, make sure it's still straight and tack the other. Um, probably go ahead and flip it at that point and um, tack the other side then start on those rosette welds. That's a nice hot tack with plenty of filler so um, hopefully I can avoid cracking any tacks or anything here but I want to make sure it's secure it's going to be getting pretty hot too this is uh, really thick stuff so yeah I'm just back here looking down the arms making sure everything's still really nice and parallel and it's looking good alright Go ahead and tack this other side, and I think I'll flip this over and uh, tack it 180. And I'll actually uh, take this chance. And I Go ahead and dime this machine out uh, all the way because this stuff's real thick and I think it can use the amperage. But if it starts getting out of hand, I'll just dial it back a little bit.
definitely want to make sure you ground the uh, center of these if you're welding one. Um, don't want to ground through the arms. It'll mess with the finish and uh, discolor them and they'll not look as pretty. You know, the circuit's got to travel through something. might just throw a couple more on there and then uh, I pull these arms off and start welding I'll try to go ahead and get a couple more here and then I'll have all the quadrants tacked and Move on to the rosette welds. It's forgetting an extremely important part. I'm glad I remembered. I was just watching a video of uh, Leroy the Corvette uh, cutting a 701 in the quarter mile, and uh, they are getting really close to a six second pass in that thing, but really close. I think they will. That's uh, That car's actually got the same uh, 10 soldier race car suspension brackets as this Nova. They've got some stuff on some really cool cars. They make nice stuff. They've really kind of answered a slot in the uh, parallel four link uh, small tire world. Um, Good stuff, good geometry for that. 28 to 30 inch tire, radial stuff. Um, also applicable for uh, 28 inch, like a 28105 slick. Even a 29, 29105 and that kind of stuff. Well, this looks great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull the arms off and all that and get ready to uh, complete these rosette welds and then we'll weld around the perimeters. All right, just working on uh, these rosette welds. Um, I've been working on the first um, pair on either side 180 degrees apart from each other. Um, and after this one, I'm going to let everything cool and, and come back and do the other four. All right, I'm gonna let these cool, and then um, once it's not too hot to handle, I'll um, go ahead and uh, get the uh, get the other four holes, two on each side. So we'll check that out here in a sec. Let's get these other four rosette welds all welded in here, and. Let it cool, and then we'll be on to the uh, V-notch welds on either side.
All right, I just kind of took that one in steps, uh, working different areas of it. That's why I stopped and started a few times. Um, <clears throat> and just to kind of reposition the filler. I'm having to add filler pretty much immediately just to keep the uh, weld clean. Um, even that last one got a little uh, hissy at me, so um, it's tricky with this thickness of metal to keep this nice and clean. Um, but I've been checking the inside, and it's uh, turning blue, so it, you know heat's getting into everything. It's it's all getting nice and penetrated. These holes are 5 sixteenths of an inch in uh, diameter and a quarter inch deep, so they take a lot of filler. But before I start adding filler, I, I make sure to start the arc on the insert piece. Then just start adding filler to kind of fill the weld and um, kind of work my way from one side of the plug weld to the other and then level it all out at the end. It takes a lot of filler and I just use this 1 16th for everything so I'm just kind of having to uh, totally uh, just load it in but it's all good. It gives me more control over it. was able to do that one in a little bit more direct manner. Um, I think that one's going to be nice and hot on the inside, so that's good. I'm just being really careful with the application of heat because I don't want it to get fizzy. Um, I had some of that happen uh, building the uh, control arms, and I had to clean it out and kind of counteract that using filler and change the my technique a little bit but these uh these are looking pretty good I'm just gonna let them cool and um then it'll be uh it'll be time for the uh perimeter welds and those uh v notches on either end cool so uh time to lay some beads in these v notches uh, around the perimeter on either end here I still got the machine uh, maxed out at 200 amps and um, I'm just going to start running this bead around here. Um, I'll probably reposition a few times, um, but I'm going to see how it goes. I might just lay a few beads down here to start and um, just uh, take a look at them and, and see if everything's looking right.
All right, so it's um, it's melting past the edges of the uh, the V notch there, um, which is um, which is fine. It means it's really uh, powerful uh, arc there too. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it's going. Um, I want to uh, be penetrating down in there as far as I can go anyway. Um, so that's, uh, that's looking good. I will be going over this a second time with a cat pass just to add more filler and fill in the little bit of uh, concavity that this, uh, this weldment is uh, producing. I've gone all the way around and um, kind of got my root pass in there. Um, like I said, it's <clears throat> it's got kind of a concave uh, shape to it, but everything seemed to go nicely and cleanly. And um, got a little out of position there uh, in a couple spots, but. It's all right. I'm going to try to make sure everything's nice and even um, with the uh, pass that's going to go over that. And I'm going to go ahead and just flip this and, and weld it <clears throat> with the same hand just for uh, consistency. Um, and I like this position best. Um, so I'm just going to pretty much do the same thing and then uh, let it cool.
looking good. It's um, it's getting warm though, so I'm gonna let it sit. Center's still cool, but I'm starting to heat soak, so I'm gonna let it do that, <clears throat> and then um, I'm going to start 180 degrees out um, on the side that I started from, and uh, just go around. Uh, with, with another pass using filler just to kind of level out the uh, the weld here and I want to keep it from straying too far from that notch um, just because that's where the bearing is going to be it's got a little bit of clearance but um, just want to avoid crowding that so everything's good to go but I'll show you all that here in just a little bit all right time to go for that cap pass uh, second time around the uh, perimeter of this thing. I'm just going to keep adding filler and keep try to keep everything nice and even and um, hopefully have a nice consistent uh, bead around here. Um, <clears throat> I backtracked a couple times there just to make sure I kept the uh, beads kind of centered as well as I can but it's hard the second time around because you don't have that center line of the uh, the V trench there uh, to to aim the electrode at but that uh that looks pretty good looks like I went all the way around just once and not one and a quarter but sorry to stop at that um, plug weld, uh, rosette weld there, and um, it's looking pretty good, so I'm going to switch to the other side and uh, kind of repeat the process. All right, I was able to run through that one a little bit quicker. Um, I just kind of find found my uh, position with all this, but um, otherwise, pretty similar. I had to kind of go over a couple of those, uh, just getting off track a little bit. But um, it's looking pretty good, and it's uh, 
definitely uh, nice and warm here, so I'm going to let it cool down, and then um, we'll uh, check everything out and uh, move on to the next step. So the torsion bar is all welded up. I've got everything laid out here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and assemble everything to mock everything up in the car and make sure everything's good to go. All right. <clears throat> going to go ahead and uh, install one bearing in here. Um, nice tight fit. And I think I'm going to have to drive the uh, bottom portion in. Um, I've got this old bearing race that fits on the, the uh, shell of the actual bearing pretty nicely. And so I'm going to try to just tap it in with that. Um, with this race driver. Let's see how that does. Cool. So it's it's uh, sitting down um, on the bottom of that uh, cup, and um, there's a retainer clip, um, which ensures that this doesn't go anywhere during use. All right. So um, got this bearing in. Um, the second bearing needs to go in um, with the shaft in place um, because the shaft can't slide through the bearings because of the weld. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to find the Cool. So, the shaft's poked through and now I need to position this bearing into this cup. Um, good. All right, so I've actually got the bottom supported and I've stood it up just to make sure everything stays in place here. Um, I'm going to tap that bearing in. Sounds like it's seated. Give it a couple more taps just to make sure. Yeah, sounds good. So. Perfect. Sweet. Cool. All right, got the bearings in there. Um, the uh, shaft spins nice and free in there. And uh, just to be sure I seated the bearing all the way, I went ahead and uh, put the uh, C-clip in here. Um, I believe it's fully seated. It, it gets thicker at the top there. Um, actually, just as a visual, you can kind of see. So it's in there, and um, that's, uh, that's looking really sweet. Other side popped right in, too. Looking good. And um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, populate it with, uh, with the little nice nylon spacers or some kind of plastic. Um, it'll be a nice spacer, um, but also it'll be a nice self-lubricating you know, thrust bearing on that. This one on here. This one uh, fits a little tighter, um, but it goes on really nicely once it's uh, once it's in line. This is the tricky part. 
I don't want to clock them a spline off. Perfect. Cool. All right, I'm going to get these uh, mounting tabs all cleaned up and uh, ready to weld to the chassis. So I want to go ahead and uh, polish the edges and I'll DA the flat surfaces just to make sure everything's clean and doesn't have impurities on it. Cool. And that's just kind of what it looks like with a cleaned up edge. Um, I've already cleaned these edges uh, where they weld on. Um, I will be beveling these as well uh, to help with weld penetration, but I'm going to clean the rest of them up and, um, and then DA the flat surfaces. Got them all cleaned up, and uh, next will be uh, I'm going to bevel them a little bit more on the uh, edges that weld to the chassis. Then they'll be ready to set up uh, with this to uh, mount that into the chassis. All right, I've got all the uh, bracket tabs beveled and uh, cleaned up, so those are looking good. And uh, time to move on to uh, some of the next steps here. All right, cool. So everything's assembled um, as far as the anti-roll bar housing, shaft, and arms goes. Um, and next, I'm going to uh, just wipe down these tabs that I already uh, cleaned up and uh, beveled and everything, um, as well as I'm going to uh, go ahead and polish the tubing that these will weld to. Um, then I will assemble these onto these tabs and sit everything in the car, situate it all, center it, and um, prepare to uh, tack these tabs in. These washer shims uh, are super thin, just ten thousandths of an inch, um, so they shouldn't throw anything off dimensionally, um, but they'll leave just enough room for installation and a uh, paint finish. All right, cool. Got all the tabs on with the ten thousandths inch thick spacers in there. Um, tighten all the bolts up, and um, I'm going to be welding the outside. So I've got that bevel beveled side out because um, that's for weld penetration. It's going to catch the tube pretty much right in the uh, top uh, crown of the the round tube, um, but I want to have that just so that I can make a nice pass on the outside here and, and penetrate that weld nice and nice and deep there and make sure it's strong. Um, so I'm going to take it over to the car and uh, set it up in there and we'll, uh, we'll check it out at that point. All right. So I'm starting to get it mocked up in there. Um, and I'm working on centering it and everything, but that's, uh, that's how it fits. Um, got the uh, mounting tabs just kind of stuck in there. I might have to kind of loosen the bolts up and just get everything settled down perfectly flat. Um, but it's uh, it's looking good. Um, fitting in there nicely. And uh, kind of show you um, the, the range of swing that it has here. Um, obviously, at a certain point, the uh, heim joint will bind up against this surface inside the arm here, so it can only go up so far. Um, but it can drop down almost straight. Um, another thing that really needs to be avoided is maxing out the anti-roll bar because what can happen is when the axle comes back up, it can invert, and then if the heim joint gets stuck up that way, it can break everything off, or um, if it doesn't break, it can just kind of hard tail the rear end of the car. And if that happens on the big end of the track, 
um, you can lose traction at high speed. So it's just something to avoid. Um, but otherwise, this thing's looking uh, really great. And um, I'm just working on uh, making sure it's all centered and uh, ready to uh, start welding in. All right, so I've got the anti-roll bar housing um, positioned in the car. Um, I've got it centered. Uh, I've been measuring between the uh, frame rails um, and the arms. And I've got it, uh, got it right in the middle. And now I'm gonna go ahead and um, tack this mounting plate on um, and then remeasure everything and uh, kind of continue on from uh, from that and just tack that side and then the back and then uh, just continue to uh, tack it on there until everything's in position. All right, cool. First tack in. Um, now I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, Measure it, make sure everything stayed in the center, and uh, then I'll uh, get set up um, on the other side there. Go ahead and tack that in, and just to make sure this thing doesn't go anywhere. Sweet. All right, sweet. So I've got everything just totally settled in on this side. I uh, loosened up the bolts on these and just kind of wiggled them until uh, they were sitting as flat as possible um, on these tubes. And um, now I'm going to go ahead and tack this bottom one. And um, I might go ahead and tack the, uh, the back on this side, then go to the other side and tack the back over there. Then I'm going to start to tack the edges um, and uh, secure these uh, secure these things in nice and uh, nice and stable. And before I weld the back uh, tabs in, I'll perform one more uh, measurement just to make sure that. Um, that this is still perfectly centered. Cool. Yep, getting the same measurement side to side there, so that's great. Um, and that's really the most important measurement is my clearance uh, at just about 9 sixteenths of an inch on either side, which will allow for a bolt head and a washer at the very least. Um, so, looks like this thing's good to go. It's on there and uh, time to hit the other side. are in. Um, I'm going to check it one more time, make sure it's symmetrical, and then um, go ahead and uh, tack, the, uh, tack the edges. Sweet. Got the uh, anti-roll bar housing tabs all welded to the chassis. And this thing's uh, looking great. It's really awesome to have this all tacked in and positioned in place and assembled. This is a uh, really serious piece of suspension hardware here that's going to help this car a lot. 
uh, really excited about this and um, can't wait to populate everything else uh, upper uh, four link arms and um, uh, still have to do all the coil over bracketry stuff and all that and um, and pretty soon I need to start on uh, building a wishbone too so we'll check that out in episodes to come but this is a uh, awesome awesome part to have uh, tacked up in here and uh, hope you all enjoyed checking this out this any roll bar kit from quarter max uh, which is their extreme series kit um, also comes with this nice assortment of parts for constructing links, um, even including the tabs which go to the uh, axle housing. And this is all nice high quality stuff, um, FK rod ends, along with nice chromoly tubing and threaded adapters for all of that. Um, also, they include this really nice grade 8 hardware with uh, jet nuts, which are interference locking and have a built-in washer uh, type construction. Uh, really nice stuff. Um, I will be constructing a set of links and adding tabs to the axle housing in a future episode. Um, I think what I want to do is um, fit up the axle in the car next, the uh, rear end housing, and go ahead and make the upper four link arms and these Randy Roll Bar end links in that episode. So we'll check that out then. But this kit has a lot of really nice pieces and it's been uh, really awesome putting the uh, torsion bar uh, all together with all the uh, spline stuff, the nice arms and everything. Um, so it's coming together really awesome. Um, definitely would recommend this kit if you need one for your race car. It's just uh, it's nice to uh, see this kind of quality uh, in, in things these days. There's a lot of good stuff out there. You just have to look for it, but this is, uh, this is definitely one of those things. Well, hope y'all liked this video and enjoyed the uh, look into the assembly and installation of this anti roll bar system. Um, plenty more stuff to come, so I hope you'll continue to join me and uh, check check this project out. I want to thank you again for liking and subscribing. Uh, I appreciate it. Really stoked to be getting close to 500 subscribers, and I uh, can't wait to see it grow from there. But um, until next time, thanks for watching, and y'all take care. Thanks.